Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is Kevin. I'm not sure when you're watching this, but at the time of this recording, the world is dealing with COVID-19. Many people are either working from home, many are sick, many have lost their jobs. Wherever you are, I hope you're healthy and safe. For me, just to have a bit of certainty in these uncertain times, I decided that I'm just gonna continue working my plan for the year. And that includes creating the NRC video training series to help people get their CCMP Enterprise certification. Even though as I record this, Pearson View just closed their testing centers for a period of time. But during this difficult period, I'm gonna to continue to do my thing, creating training videos for you. And this week's video comes from our upcoming Anarsi course, and it covers the theory and configuration of route redistribution. If you find it valuable, please do me a favor and give me a like down below and subscribe to see all of our YouTube content as we continue to crank it out for you. But for now, stay safe and enjoy this video on route redistribution. Until we have one routing protocol to rule them all, there's a need to have multiple routing protocols peacefully coexist on the same network. Perhaps company A runs EIGRP and company B runs OSPF and the two companies merge until the newly combined IT staff agrees on a standard protocol to use, if they ever agree on one, the routes known to OSPF need to be advertised into EIGRP and vice versa. This kind of scenario is possible thanks to route redistribution, and that's the focus of this video. Other reasons that we might need to perform a route redistribution include having different parts of your network under different administrative control, or perhaps we want to connect out with the network of a business partner, and also when we're connecting out to the internet, we might want to advertise our IGP routes, our interior gateway protocol routes, into BGP or vice versa. Those are the types of things that route redistribution can help us with. Now consider the uh, basic topology we see here. Here we're wanting uh, OSPF and EIGRP to advertise routes that they know about into one another. And this concept is called mutual route redistribution. And since router R2 has one interface in OSPF and one interface in EIGRP, it's its responsibility to do the route redistribution. That's where all the configuration is going to be done, and we're going to be doing that configuration coming up in a bit. But the primary challenge that we run into when redistributing routes between different routing protocols is the different approaches routing protocols use to measure their metrics. For example, OSPF uses a metric of cost, which is based entirely on bandwidth, while EIGRP uses a metric that's, by default, based on bandwidth and delay. And this issue isn't as simple as something like converting currencies between two countries, because in that scenario, there's a ratio describing the relationship of the two currencies. But with route redistribution, we don't have a relationship like that. So what are we supposed to do? Well, we as administrators can configure the metric assigned to routes coming in or from one autonomous system, which are being redistributed into another autonomous system, and if we don't bother to do that manually, if we don't do that configuration, there are defaults. Those default metrics are called seed metrics. And here we see some of those. If you take a look at this table, we can see that by default, a route redistributed into OSPF will be assigned a metric of 20, unless that route is being redistributed into OSPF from BGP. In that case, it's going to be given a metric of 1. Now, interestingly, both RIP and EIGRP have a default seed metric of infinity, meaning that a route redistributed into those routing protocols will be considered unreachable by default. So when we're redistributing into RIP and EIGRP, especially, we want to manually configure what metric gets assigned to those routes. Now, BGP is a bit different. It's going to use whatever the initial interior gateway protocol metric was to begin with. Because remember, BGP isn't looking at just a single metric. Instead, it goes through a fairly lengthy process of different things it's going to check, like weight and local preference and several other things. And that's a look at the basic theory of route redistribution. So next, let's take a look at a configuration example of mutual route redistribution. Here's the topology we had earlier, and in this topology, router R2 is learning routes from R1 via OSPF, it's learning routes from R3 via EIGRP, and what we're going to do is configure R2 to mutually redistribute routes learned from one routing source into the other routing source. 
And our route redistribution that we do entirely on R2, it's going to use the redistribute command. But there's a lot of confusion about this command. For example, if I'm in the OSPF router configuration mode and I give the redistribute command saying I want to redistribute EIGRP, what am I saying? Am I saying that I want to redistribute OSPF into EIGRP or do I want to redistribute EIGRP into OSPF? Well, here's the rule I want you to remember. When we give the redistribute command under router configuration mode for a specific routing protocol, we're saying we want to redistribute routes into that routing protocol. So in the example I gave where we're giving the redistribute command under OSPF router configuration mode saying we want to redistribute EIGRP, what we're saying is we want to redistribute EIGRP learned routes into the OSPF routing process. Now let's go out to the topology we examined and set up mutual route redistribution. Let's issue the show IP route command on router R2 to see what routes R2 knows about. Let's do a show IP route, and you'll notice that it is learning routes from EIGRP. We can see those because they're tagged with this D code. Those are EIGRP learned routes. And the O indicates that these networks were learned via OSPF. But if I go over to router R1, have I learned anything? If I do a show IP route here, have I learned anything via a routing protocol at all? And the answer is no, I haven't. R2 is not advertising any networks to me. All I know about are networks within the OSPF autonomous system. Same thing if I go to R3. If I do a show IP route, I'm only gonna know about routes as part of the EIGRP autonomous system. So let's take a look, and we do this on R2, let's take a look at how we can add route redistribution to tell R2 to take the OSPF routes, inject them into EIGRP, and vice versa. And I want to reinforce a statement we made earlier about the seed metric. We said that the default metric, or the seed metric, for EIGRP is infinity. So just to prove that, initially, I'm not going to configure any metrics, and I'm just going to let the default seed metric do its thing. So in router R2, let's go into global configuration mode, and I'll say router OSPF, our process ID is 1, and I'll say redistribute EIGRP autonomous system number 1. And let's do the same thing for EIGRP. I'll say router EIGRP autonomous system 1, redistribute OSPF process ID 1. And let's see what happens now. And notice I did not specify any metrics at all. Something else I didn't do when I said redistribute EIGRP1, I did not give the subnets keyword. We typically want to give the subnets keyword because that's going to cause both classful and classless networks to be redistributed. However, in recent versions of Cisco IOS, we might get that added for us automatically. Let's take a look. Let's do a show run pipe to section router OSPF1. And even though I did not say subnets, the keyword of subnets got added automatically. But your version of Cisco IOS might not do that, so I think it's a good practice to usually, if that's what you're wanting to do, usually issue the subnets keyword. Now let's take a look at the IP routing table on routers R1 and R3. First, let's go over to router R1 and let's do a show IP route. And we see we have learned some routes via OSPF. We see the O and we see that they've been learned with OSPF's default metric of a 20. We didn't set that. That was automatically configured for us. Now notice this E2. That's telling us that this is an OSPF external route, specifically a type 2 external route. We'll be distinguishing between a type 2 and a type 1 external route a little bit later in this video. But for now, we're just trying to get all the routes redistributed. We've got our EIGRP learned routes injected into OSPF. Let's see if the same is true for router R3. Have we learned the OSPF routes? Have they been injected into EIGRP? Let's do a show IP route. And the answer is no. We haven't learned any routes beyond what we already knew. And why is that? It's that default seed metric of EIGRP. It's a seed metric of infinity. So when those routes were injected into EIGRP, they appeared to be unreachable. And to resolve this issue, we need to assign a metric to routes being redistributed into EIGRP. And if you want to take a note on this, there are three primary ways that we can assign a non-default metric to a route that's being redistributed into a routing protocol. Number one, we can set a default metric for all routing protocols being injected into EIGRP. 
Number two, we can set a metric as part of the redistribute command. And third, we can set a metric using a route map. And to illustrate the first option, let's configure the metric to assign all routes being injected into EIGRP to be the same metric. It doesn't matter if I'm injecting OSPF or RIP or whatever, they're all going to have the same metric as they're injected into EIGRP. To do that, let's go back over to router R2 and we'll go into global configuration mode and back into router EIGRP autonomous system 1 configuration mode. And I'm going to say default hyphen metric. And if we use some context sensitive help, it's going to walk us through the metric components of EIGRP. First is bandwidth and the unit of measure is in kilobits per second. And I'll say that we're working with gig links and a gig is 1 million K. So I'll say 1 million. So uh, one and one, two, three, one, two, three, six zeros after the one. Next, we specify delay. Here, the unit of measure is in tens of microseconds. And I'll just say we've got very little delay. We'll give a one to say we've got a 10 microsecond delay. Next, we'll say how reliable this link is. And reliability is a number over 255. And if I say 255, that's completely reliable. So I'll say 255. Next, we're going to specify the loading, where minimally loaded is a 1 over 255. I'll say a 1. And even though it's not part of the EIGRP metric formula, MTU is there as a tiebreaker. And I'll say my MTU, my maximum transmission unit, is 1,500 bytes, which is the default, by the way. Let's end this. And even though we used the seed metric of 20 for OSPF, if I wanted to change it, we could. In fact, let's do that. Let's go into router... OSPF process ID 1, and I'll say default hyphen metric 30. So we'll see that we've made a change when we look at those routes over on R1. So that's going to be the default metric for OSPF. Now, let's go over to R3 and see if we've learned any routes. Let's do a show IP route. Great news, we have Router R3 has learned routes originating in the OSPF autonomous system. And we know they came from outside EIGRP because next to the D that indicates EIGRP, we've got this EX, and that means EIGRP external. And you remember when we talked about administrative distance, we said if a route were redistributed into EIGRP, instead of having EIGRP's normal administrative distance of a 90, External routes have an AD of 170, and we can see that right here. This is the new administrative distance because these were injected into EIGRP. And by the way, let's go over to router R1 and see if our cost has changed. Instead of having a metric of 20, I set the default metric to a 30. Let's do a show IP route. Did that change? Yeah, it sure did. Here we see the new default metric of a 30. But let's go back over to router R2 and take a look at a different way of setting the metric for these routes being injected into EIGRP. The second option we talked about was we could assign the metric as part of the redistribute command. So what I want to do is remove our previous default metric keyword and the redistribute command. Then I'll put the redistribute command back. And as part of that, I'll specify the metric. So let's go back into router EIGRP autonomous system one configuration mode, and I'll say no default hyphen metric. And it was one, one, two, three, one, two, three. And we had a one, two, 55, and a one, and a 1500. Let's also get rid of the redistribute command. I'll say no redistribute OSPF process ID one. So we've removed any redistribution configuration for EIGRP. Now let's do everything with one command. I'll say redistribute OSPF process ID 1 and the metric as part of the redistribute command. I'll specify the bandwidth. I'll give a 1 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros. For the delay, I'll say it's 10 microseconds. And since tens of microseconds is our unit of measure, I'll give a 1. For the reliability, I'll say we're totally reliable. It's 255. Our load, we're minimally loaded. That'll be a one. And our MTU is gonna be 1500. Let's bounce out of that configuration, go back over to router R3, and we should see the same result we saw earlier. If I do a show IP route, we should still see those routes. We do. Nothing has changed from the perspective of R3. We just configure things a little bit differently on R2. Now let's take a look at the third option for setting a metric on a redistributed route. It's to use a route map. 
And route maps are super powerful. They can be used for a variety of configurations. Essentially, they can match traffic. And then, once traffic has been matched, we can set one or more parameters. For example, I could say if I've matched a particular packet, I could set its next top IP address and essentially override where the routing protocol is telling me to go. But in our context, we're focused on using a route map specifically for setting a metric value. And here, we don't even have to match traffic. We can just say, set the metric value to this. Here's how we do that. Let's go back over to router R2. And in router EIGRP autonomous system one configuration mode, let's negate that previous command I gave. I'll put a no in front of that. And now let's create a route map. To do that, I'll say route hyphen map, and I'll call this set hyphen metric hyphen demo. Now, normally when I create a route map, if I've got several different matching criteria, I would set a sequence number here. So the first sequence number might be a 10, the next one might be a 20 and so on. Here, I'm just doing one thing with the route map. So there's really no need to enter a sequence number. So I can just press enter and I can set, let's use some context sensitive help. I can set several different things with a route map. Like I said, it is super powerful. Here though, I want to set the metric and I'll say set metric and I'll give those same metric values for EIGRP that we gave earlier, which was 1 million, one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll set the delay, the reliability, the load and the MTU. Now let's apply that route map to the redistribute command. Let's go back into router configuration mode for EIGRP autonomous system one. And I'll say redistribute OSPF process ID one. And I'm going to use the route map that we called set hyphen metric hyphen demo. And let's go see if it did the same thing over on router R3, did it still work? Let's do a show IP route command. Yes, indeed. We still had those routes redistributed successfully into EIGRP. Now let's go back over to router R1 that lives in our OSPF autonomous system for a moment. If we take a look at R1, let's do a show IP route. And notice that we've got these E2 values next to the routes that we've learned from EIGRP. But notice there's also an option for E1. So what's the difference? Well, a code of E2 indicates that the route carries a metric that was assigned by the router performing the redistribution. And this router that's sitting between the two autonomous systems, R2 in our case, it's known in OSPF terminology as an ASBR, an Autonomous System Boundary Router. And an E2 code means that no matter how many routers we went through since we were advertised by the ASBR, it doesn't matter if I went through five other routers, that metric doesn't change within the OSPF autonomous system. And when we redistribute routes into OSPF, that's what happens by default. We're using an external type two. A code of E1 indicates that the router's metric is made up of the cost assigned by the ASBR plus the cost required to get back to the ASBR. Now to me, that sounds like the E1 route is potentially more accurate. However, having a code of E1 doesn't really give us any advantage in this case. In a simple topology like this, where R1 only has one way to get out of the autonomous system, there's only one ASBR, and there's only one way to get to that ASBR, it really doesn't matter if we use E1 or E2. But in a more complex topology, I might prefer to have a code of E1 because that's gonna be more accurate about the true cost. And I wanna show you how we can configure route redistribution to specify the code of an E1. Let's go back over to router R2 and we'll go into router OSPF process ID one configuration mode. And I'll say no redistribute EIGRP one subnets. We just got rid of our redistribute command. Now let's enter a new redistribute command. I'll say redistribute EIGRP autonomous system one now I'm going to say the metric type is one. Let's enter that. Now let's go back and check out the IP routing table on router R1. Before I gave that command, notice the cost of these redistributed routes. It was a cost of 30 or a metric of 30 because that's the metric that I configured on router R2. Let's take a look now. Let's do a show IP route. 
And now we have an external type 1, an E1 code. And notice the cost now, or the metric. It's a 31. It's adding the cost of 1, the cost over a gig link, it's adding the cost of 1 that it's going to cost R1 to get to R2. And to that, it adds the metric R2 was advertising, which was a 30. So 30 plus 1 gives us 31. I think that's a more accurate representation of what the metric should look like. And that's a look at a basic route redistribution configuration. Mm -hmm.